another spat seems to be brewing between the U.S. Secretary of State and the Israeli government. It all started after John Kerry expressed his concern over the lack of progress at peace negotiations with the Palestinians. Well, Mr. Kerry, who has been holding back and forth talks with both sides, said over the weekend that the status quo being maintained by Israel is not sustainable. And uh, he also warned that many countries could seek to boycott Tel Aviv if peace negotiations fail. Now, this triggered an angry response with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu saying that any efforts to boycott Israel would be unjustified and counterproductive. Israel's uh, strategic affairs minister then weighed in, saying Israel cannot be expected to negotiate with a gun to its head. And the economy minister went a step further, calling on Israel's allies to stand up against those who try to pursue anti-Semitic agendas against his country. Well, there's been a public backlash, too, with some 2,000 Israelis gathering outside the Western Wall in Jerusalem last week for a prayer rally against U.S. efforts to broker an agreement. The two sides resumed peace talks last July. A deadline has been set for April, with Israeli settlements in the West Bank and East Jerusalem remaining a key sticking point. Let's now bring in Amir Oren. He's a senior correspondent and columnist for Haaretz newspaper. Thank you so much, Mr. Oren, for joining us here on RT International to discuss this. So, um, what do you make of Israelis' Hi, reaction, and especially uh, the Israeli government, uh, to Kerry's words? I mean, could they be overreacting? Diplomatically, it makes uh, no sense at all for Netanyahu and his government uh, to uh, try and uh, fight uh, President Obama and Secretary Kerry and their administration. But that is because politically it must make uh, some sense. The target audience is the Israeli public uh, as the uh, deadline approaches uh, for the uh, Kerry outline, the framework agreement between Israel and Palestine to be unveiled. And because this uh, particular framework uh, is going to be palatable to most of the Israeli public, Netanyahu is aiming at his right flank. Uh, his uh, political base within the Likud party and uh, with other parties and groups uh, to the right of it is against the Kerry uh, paradigm. And therefore, it all means that Netanyahu, rather than uh, starting to lay the ground publicly for an acceptance of uh, the Kerry proposals, is going to be actively working against them. All right. Well, as we know, uh, business and politics often go together, and some of the European businesses have already uh, stopped or limited trade with Israeli businesses in West Bank uh, settlements. Uh, why does that not concern Israel, or does it? Long term, it does concern Israel to a great extent. The impact uh, has not been uh, greatly felt yet, except in the uh, occupied territories where Israeli businesses have already been boycotted uh, to, uh, to some extent by uh, other uh, importers um, world over, uh, because people uh, have uh, made the distinction between products of the West Bank and those of Israel proper. But now, the threat is that uh, all Israeli products could be boycotted because of Israel's policy vis-a-vis -vis the territories. This is indeed uh, a cause for concern. And in your opinion, will the Israeli government ever back down uh, to the question of settlements? The Israeli government uh, is right now politically dependent on the settlers and uh, their supporters. Uh, Israel uh, must have uh, uh, another round of elections and uh, another uh, uh, sort of coalitions or governments uh, before it can sign the sort of peace agreement that uh, Secretary Kerry is uh, probably preparing. However, uh, Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas must come forward and help those pro-peace groups in Israel uh, fight the Netanyahu government policy, because up to now, Abu Mazen, Mahmoud Abbas, has been too silent on his part of the deal. Well, the deadline for peace deal is in April. And how realistic, in your opinion, is it for Israel to meet that deadline? And also, what is Israel already doing? Uh, what sort of steps is it taking to reach it? 
It's quite a flexible uh, uh, due date. It's not really a deadline because uh, it could move uh, backwards or forwards uh, a few weeks or even months. It is only a framework agreement. This is not the peace deal, the end of claims, the end of the conflict that everybody here um, has been hoping for, but uh, not everyone uh, has been willing to pay the price for. So um, what we have to see in a few weeks' time is the release of the last batch of uh, Palestinian prisoners who uh, uh, have been held in Israeli jails since uh, 1993 or even earlier, even before the Oslo process. Once this is over, the two sides, Palestinians and the Israelis, are going to weigh their options and find out whether there is going to be a trilateral American-Israeli-Palestinian deal or only an American-Palestinian formula that Israel would have to either uh, accept or reject. In the latter case, there will probably be a political crisis within Israel. All right, Hamira Oren, senior correspondent for Haaretz newspaper. Thank you so much for your views here on RT International.